Today, we're gonna take a look at a brand new reverb plugin from Universal Audio that is modeled after one of the most famous studios in the world, Sound City. And it has a trick up its sleeve that probably makes it my favorite reverb plugin. Let's get into it. So what Universal Audio has done is they have went in and they have modeled the room. This is not just an impulse response. Like most room reverbs, they just do a, an impulse of the room, and then that impulse just goes on everything. They've not done this, and they wouldn't tell me exactly how they created this plugin, but basically they have sampled the room based on what instruments are getting played in it, and it is scary accurate sounding, scary real sounding. But Sound City Studios is one of the most famous studios in the world. I'm going to read the list to you here. Uh, the number of artists that have been in it. Johnny Cash, Neil Young, Fleetwood Mac, Elton John, U2, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers, Bob Dylan, Guns N' Roses, Nirvana, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Metallica, Tool, Slayer, Rage Against the Machine, Def Cab for Cutie, Fall Out Boy, and a whole bunch more, obviously. There has been over 100 albums recorded at Sound City that have received gold or platinum status, which is like... That's crazy. So the idea that we can have this character of this room, because the room that the stuff was recorded in is a huge, it imparts a, a lot of character into the sounds. The fact that we can have this same room that was on over a hundred gold and platinum records uh, on our own music without even having room mics set up. That's one of the tricks. You don't even actually need room mics in order for this to work because they figured out some black voodoo magic. I don't even know. Let's jump into it and take a listen. Okay, so I'm using the piece of music that I worked up for my signature preamp release. Uh, so you guys have heard this before, but what I wanna do here is I wanna just quickly run you through what this thing sounds like because it's so in depth, it will be very hard for me to actually show you everything. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna play this piece of music and then I'm gonna mute the instances of Sound City on the drums and watch, like just listen to how much smaller everything gets. Here we go. Let's take away the room. Take away the snare reverb. Put him back. That is such a wild, massive difference. So I want to start with the room reverb first. Now, I'm going to bypass this. Here is the original room microphones from this song when we track drums. This is a real stereo pair of room microphones that we used. Here's what it sounds like. Okay. And now let me put the Sound City plug-in back on. Okay, so you can see we've got two modes here. We've got remic and reverb, and then we've got different sources, drums, acoustic, guitar, vocal, ensemble, and then inside of each one of these, we've got live, tight, which brings in the baffles and changes the sounds, and then over in the corner here. Acoustic guitar, same thing, we've got live, we have got a different set of baffles, and guitars, we've got different uh, cabinets, so you can, it simulates different cabinets, and basically what they've done, I don't understand how they've done this, but what they've done is, if you play a kick and a snare in a room, it excites the frequencies in the room totally differently than how an acoustic guitar would, or a vocal would, or a piano would. And so what they've done is they've been able to figure out how to get the room to do what the room does on a particular instrument. So that way, like to me, that's what makes this, this is a bold statement, probably the most realistic room reverb I've ever heard. Um, which is wild. Now on the remic mode here, what is even more insane is it's almost like a mic modeling built in. So it takes the source of, of what you're feeding it. In this case, it's an actual pair of room microphones and it is remiking it into the characteristics of these microphones that were used in this room. Crazy. Now, obviously, you can change it over to just reverb, uh, and we're gonna—I'm gonna show you that here in a minute. Uh, you also then have uh, three different room sounds. So you've got close rooms. Let's go back to drums here because that's what we're actually working with. So you've got uh, close rooms here, which are kind of like overheads, and you can—you've uh, got C12, C14, and a 7070DX. You have got room two, which brings these in here, and you've got. 
uh, C12, a single C12, you have got a pair of U67s or a pair of KM54s. And then in room three, you've got a pair of U67s here, KM54s or KM84s. Now, what is also interesting about these microphones and these placements is they actually brought back in engineers that worked on these enormous massive records at Sound City and there's kind of like a handful of setups that were used they figured out that sound really good in this room and that were used on all these big records and that's what they did here so these configurations in these microphone locations are the microphone locations and the setups that they used on those crazy records. So then you pull open the, the uh, control tab here and you can also control the distance of each of these mic pairs. So if we're on room two here, you can see as I pull this down, these microphones get closer and further away and you can do this for any microphone. You've also, and we're gonna get to more sound examples here in a second, but you've also got, uh, you can phase a line each one of these. For me personally, I would very rarely ever do this because the difference in phase relationships is what gives depth to a room sound. So I would probably rarely if ever use that. We've got a low pass, we've got a high pass, we've got a, a polarity. Um, and then this is all run through a Neve console. If you've ever seen the documentary Sound City uh, with Dave Grohl and the Foo Fighters, which is one of the best musical documentaries I've ever seen. He took the, the Neve console out of Sound City. Well, they've replaced it with one that's more or less identical. Uh, and so this has been modeled. All of these microphones and this console, the Neve console, what you're hearing here is all of that signal chain modeled together. Then you get into the, the effects tab here and we've got a built-in equalizer. They have a chamber at Sound City, a reverb chamber, and so they have included that chamber, which sounds fantastic. And then we get into our dynamic section, which is not just the dynamic section. Obviously, we've got an 1176, we got a bus compressor here, we got Crush. But you get into this encode, and we're gonna get into this on vocals because it is wild. This encode is the Mutt Lang trick that is famously on like the Def Leppard background vocals. This is the background vocal sound for Def Leppard. The Dolby uh, noise reduction unit that has all the different cards in it, that was Mutt Lang's trick and he runs all the vocals through that and it gives it this really like hyper top end, I don't even know how to describe it. It's a, it's a completely different thing than you can accomplish with an EQ, and this has it built into it. So we, I wanna show that off. So you've heard the difference in what it does with a pair of room tracks, but what is also really incredible about this is we can use this to fake rooms, like literally fake them. So if you've recorded a drum kit and there was no room or the room sounds like crap or uh, the, it's too small of a room to actually have a room, I wanna show you how I've faked a drum set. So, or how I've faked a drum rooms. So I've created a new aux here and I've run sends, pre-fader sends off of the kick and the snare and the toms and all of this stuff, the overheads. And uh, I've panned them, so Tom 1 is panned, and Tom 3 is panned the other way, and, and the sends on the overheads are panned left and right. And so these all go to this aux here. Now, if I bypass this, this is what that aux sounds like. Just unprocessed, close uh, drum microphones. So then we take the Sound City plug in and we put it on. Now I've already dialed this in, uh, but here is what it sounds like with the Sound City plug in on top of this set to reverb just to get some fake rooms. Here we go. It sounds pretty awesome. Now I do have some chamber going on here because I just like how it sounds. Uh, now for me personally, this still needs a little bit of tweaking uh, to make it sound like how I would actually mix it. So I've put an EQ before this plug-in because you usually wouldn't have that much cymbal hitting uh, the room microphone. So I've kind of pulled this down. So here's what that sounds like. A little bit more authentic. And then I've put a reverb after Sound City and here's what that sounds like. which is exactly what I would be doing to a room microphone set if I had it. I would make it sound just like this. So let's bypass all these is again what it sounds like. Just close room microphones. Put those all back in.
Now I'm gonna mute the actual drum room that I have going on here, and we're just gonna push this up and blend it with the actual drums. Here we go. Just the close mics. Listen to the size that gives it. Without it. With it. That, I mean, that to me, to me, that sounds really, really good and really, really authentic. Like, to me, that sounds like a pair of room microphones and it's completely fake. Like, that... It's kind of crazy, honestly. Okay, so let me show you what I have set up here for a snare reverb, because I do really like room reverbs on snares. I always use a room style reverb on my snare drums. So what I've got here is a blend of pretty much everything. We've got the close rooms, uh, the mid rooms, and the far rooms uh, with three different microphone selections. And then I have got the distances kind of dialed in a little bit. The close rooms are the closest they can be. And then we're adding some dynamics and then we're adding some chamber. So let me bypass this for you. Back in. Okay, so one of the cool things is you have the ability to turn these sections off individually. So if I just wanna use the EQ or the dynamics or the chamber, I can just turn all the rooms off all in one button here and it will keep all of this stuff going. So here's what the chamber sounds like. You got long, different microphones. Okay, so next I wanna show you how awesome this Dolby noise reduction thing is on vocals. Cause I'm equally as excited about this as I am about the whole reverb plugin. Universal Audio, I know several people from UA are gonna watch this video. Please, please, please make this a standalone plugin that is just no, the Dolby noise reduction uh, the whole thing. Please, please, I'm begging you, please do this because this is awesome. Okay, uh, so let me open up the Sound City plugin. So basically what I've done here is I've grouped all the background vocals. And uh, so you're hearing all the background vocals grouped along with the lead vocal. And I've just got them soloed so you can really hear the difference. And then halfway through, I'm going to turn this back on. And basically all I'm turning on is a little bit of the chamber and the encoder here for the Dolby noise reduction. Here we go. Tied on myself a little too well to be around her because I can't help. And with it. Tied on myself a little too well to be around her because I can't help. Getting just a little too carried away happens every time I say just one drink. I don't know if you guys are as excited about that as I am, but that is awesome. It is crazy how that just adds all this crazy top end stuff that doesn't sound harsh. It doesn't sound anything like you just boosted a top end to me. Like that's a, a very specific thing that it's doing. And, and I love it. Like I love it, love it. By the way, this is a song by Clayton Shay uh, called I Know Myself. It's already out. This is a mix that's done. Uh, so I'll put his info down below if you want to go follow him. Or if you want to look up the song Clayton Shay, I Know Myself, you can hear the finished mix. Now all that I have on that is just the chamber and just the dynamics, and that's it for the encoder. Like, that's it, that's the only thing I've added to that. Okay, next I wanna show you this on acoustic guitar. To me, drums, vocals, and acoustic are always the tests with pretty much everything. This is where I do have one criticism of this plugin, and it is simply that when we're in the remic mode here, when we're using the modeling or whatever it actually is to like retransform the microphones into a room microphone, you don't get to use the mix control. You don't get to blend the wet and the dry. You can in reverb mode, uh, but you cannot in remic mode. And that is, that's kind of a bummer, but I kind of, I guess I kind of get why they did it. Cause how do you mix 
room modeling with it. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, uh, so that is where the kind of bummer is with this. So if I was going to use this on an acoustic guitar, there are two ways that I would do this. I would either duplicate the acoustic guitar, as you can see here, or I would send the acoustic guitar to an aux and put this on it. For the sake of this video, I've just duplicated it because I want to show you the fact that this started as just the guitar track. So here is the guitar on its own. That's totally dry. We got a little bit of EQ here, but that's like, that's just what the acoustic guitar sounded like. Now, if I duplicate this and I put the Sound City plugin on it, and we'll go over my settings here in a second, and then I'm gonna start, I'm gonna solo both of these and bring in the Sound City plugin. Here we go. I like it somewhere there. We go way further. To me, that's the best way to use this in this situation, any or anytime you want to use the remic feature, uh, but you want to be able to blend wet and dry like this. There's no rooms on this acoustic guitar; it's just a stereo close mic. So what I've got here is I've got the close rooms mixed with the the room one, mixed with room two, and then we have. Uh, some of the dynamics with the encoder, a little bit of that Dolby thing, and some of the chambers. So, and again, this is on the actual acoustic guitar with the live sound, which is just, it's kind of nuts. But let's just solo the reverb and go through some of these modes here. I'm gonna turn the chamber and the dynamics off for this, so that way we're hearing just the remodeling. So that's the live, let's go tight. shortens the decay of the room. Piano simulation sounds really good, actually. Let's actually just try drums. Interesting. So that's the difference in sound between the live setting on the drums and live setting on the acoustic. You can hear how how the drums is like more boomy and it has like more low mids in it. Listen to that again. So that again gives you the ability to mix and match all of this stuff. You wanna use the acoustic guitar setting on drums? Cool. You wanna use the vocal setting on acoustic guitar? Cool. Like so many different characters because every single one of these has multiple different uh, sound characters, I guess, built into it. So you have however many this is, I don't know, 30, 20, 30, 50, however many different characters you can mix and match because you can also do reverb or remic and any combination. Oh no, it's gotta be hundreds of combinations because then you've got all the different combinations of the microphones for three different pairs. Like I'm really pumped on this, you guys. I'm really, really like this plugin. Okay, now while that plugin does run natively, uh, not all of them do. Some of the Universal Audio plugins need hardware to run. They need processing power to run. And they have told me that this will always be the case. Some of their plugins will run natively. Some of them will always need a hardware accelerator in order to run. I'm used to that. I'm fine. I've run an Apollo forever. But I did just pick up something to help me out with that uh, in the pocket today. Little ProTech SBR. Yes, indeed. We are going to unbox this. So since Universal Audio plugins are such a big part of my workflow, uh, oh, candy, thanks Sweetwater. And now that I'm running two rooms, the big room is, is getting closer to being done. Now that I'm running two rooms, I needed two pieces of hardware, so I opted to go with the Universal Audio satellite. Now if you don't have a Universal Audio interface or if you need more processing power, you can pick up one of these satellites and what this is, is has a bunch of chips in it that runs the processing power for the Universal Audio plugins. To me, this is a really elegant solution and I uh, have been kind of needing more power for a while. You always need more power. So I'm pumped to add this to the setup in the big room when it's done. Universal Audio Satellite Octo is the one that I went with. Uh, I'll put a link down below. That's gonna do it for me. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this uh, as much as I did because I 
am really, really impressed with this and I'm uh, pumped to use this. I wanna go back and remix. That's a sign, I can't even talk. That's a sign of when you're really excited about something. If I get a new piece of hardware or a new plugin and it, it makes me really excited and makes me feel like a level up, it makes me wanna go back and remix stuff. Stuff is already released and out, so it's kind of pointless, but it literally makes me want to go remix stuff. And that's a sign, I think, to me, of something that's really, really good. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. We'll see you in the next one. Peace.